So today's video, we have a little bit of story time and me just wanting to share an accomplishment with all of you that I'm excited about. I'm a published author. Yay! Primarily referring to a recently published article in The Psychology of Sexual Orientation and Gender Diversity. Sounds like the perfect place for me, right? Although this isn't my first publication, this is my first publication where I was the first or lead author on that. So I'm pretty excited about that fact. What is this article? I'm so glad you asked. It's called LGBTQ plus people and COVID-19, the importance of resilience during a pandemic. Quite a mouthful and sounds super exciting, right? This came about because it felt important for me to conduct some research on how the COVID-19 pandemic might be impacting LGBTQ plus people since, you know, I'm part of that community. And I also knew that the pandemic had negatively impacted people from like every community and there have also been unique concerns within our community like you know trans people who are looking to have surgeries hair removal hormone access and so much more getting all of these things delayed you know broadly i feel that it is very important for people like myself who conduct research to put an effort to break down research for lay audiences so i'm going to at least try to do that here you know, if anything I say or talk about still doesn't quite make sense, please comment below with any questions that you may have. And I also do know that some of you who watch my videos do have extensive backgrounds in research, statistics, and things of that nature, but I also realize that that's not the case for most people. So long story short, I recruited a little over 200 people who identified in some way with the LGBTQ community, recruited them over the summer and begin in the fall to take an online survey about anxieties specific to the pandemic, and also general depression, general anxiety, and any coping and resilience skills that they might have. So not surprisingly, many people in this study had anxieties specific to the pandemic. Things like being isolated from loved ones, fear of reduced healthcare access, and fear of anti-LGBT and racist discrimination in a variety of contexts, including but not limited to healthcare. I also wanted to see if people in the community would still be able to utilize coping skills during the pandemic to help prevent or reduce this pandemic-specific anxiety from kind of like seeping over and turning into more generalized anxiety, depression, and distress. And yeah, people in our community can be really resilient. You know, research has shown that and, you know, just the lived experiences of what we go through just to be ourselves and we excel at so many things shows that as well. Breaking down kind of the analyses and results, hopefully as simply as possible, I tested a statistical model, started with you know, anxiety specific to the pandemic, like I mentioned, and this is the initial independent variable, if you will, and the model ended with physiological distress symptoms, things like experiencing rapid heart rates, headaches, body aches, etc., all sorts of things associated or often associated with depression and anxiety. You know, in between this pandemic anxiety and these physiological symptoms, we had generalized anxiety, so Kind of the overarching idea here is that people who experience pandemic anxiety and are also more prone to general, generally experience anxiety but not specific to any particular context are also more likely to experience negative physiological distress during this pandemic. Probably not too profound, again, based on our lived experiences, but there's unfortunately very little research on this kind of stuff, and even less research specifically within the context of the pandemic, since, you know, all of that research would have had to have been done over the past year. The next piece, though, is also seeing if resilience played a role. Did this impact the ability of pandemic anxiety to worsen somebody's experiences of general anxiety, and thereby worse and experiences of physical symptoms. And yeah, the full statistical model that went from pandemic anxiety to general anxiety, with resilience in between moderating, or in other words, affecting the strength of, the effect of pandemic anxiety on general anxiety, all to the final outcome of physiological symptoms, was highly statistically significant. And this is obviously a very abbreviated version of what was in the actual paper and the analyses that 
you know, me and my team actually did. But why is this important? Thank you so much for also asking that very great question. Y'all are great. Essentially, it helps to provide insight into areas for mental health interventions, ones that may be effective for reducing distress experienced by LGBTQ plus people, not only during a pandemic, but even more broadly during like long, stressful, wide-reaching events and situations. Providing the skills for people to build individual resilience and also tapping into community resilience, the study helps highlight the importance of this for reducing distress in a particularly distressing situation. You know, finding personal skills that allow you to de-stress as hard as it is in a crazy time, and that could be really anything that fulfills you, calms you, makes you feel accomplished, makes you feel proud, makes you feel happy, makes you just feel stronger and more capable of taking on the world. But there's also this community piece that's important to talk about. You know, finding support from friends, family, and other people in the community, that isn't something that only I talk about all the time. The research and mental health practice supports the importance of this as well. You know, the importance of this in establishing and maintaining like a positive sense of well-being. Obviously, it's not an end-all be-all solution. There is no one size fits all. It's not like do this and you're guaranteed to have success. You know, it's not like building resilience will fully or immediately solve everyone's problems, especially considering the very scary reality of living in a pandemic. But really broadly, this research does help highlight the importance of working on connecting with yourself more. Again, what makes you feel strong, fulfilled, at peace, happy, content, along with connecting with others in meaningful ways. And all of this has a very strong potential for making a very difficult situation like a pandemic, more personally manageable. And don't worry, this research project does not end here, and my research in general definitely does not end here. We also collected rich stories from participants that I, along with a small team, are in the process of analyzing to even more fully capture more of the in-depth specifics that these LGBTQ plus people in this, in this study have been experiencing along with the specific ways that they've been able to cope. So all of this serves to create a more well-rounded approach to this subject area. And obviously this touches on a very individual level. There's obviously the need for, you know, more systemic changes and more protections. And I think I'll go ahead and stop there. I really primarily just wanted to share an exciting accomplishment with all of you while also putting it out into the world that I believe the research that people like myself do needs to be made more accessible to the general public in platforms like this. I'd love to hear your thoughts and reactions. You know, what did you think about the study? And what are some of the areas that impact trans people and LGBTQ people that you think need more research? What are your thoughts on making research more accessible and how do you think we might do that? And also just as kind of a fun last thought, do you have any research that you're currently working on or you've worked on in the past that you're excited about and want to share? Please do that. You know, let me know all of this and more down in the comments below. And as always, Tipsy and I, Hope that you're staying as happy and safe and secure as you can. And if you have not done so already, please be sure to give this a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I love you all. Bye for now.